Hey, welcome to the Northeast Hunt and Film Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Alex. Here you'll find hunting stories and strategies based mainly out of the Northeast, but we'll also include hunts from all around the country. If you can hunt it and you can film it, chances are we're going to talk about it on here. Enjoy. All right, welcome back. Another episode of Northeast Hunt and Film. We are officially in the last week of September, and the temps are starting to drop, and yeah, it's starting to feel more like deer season. Um, I guess I'll give you the rundown of the season thus far. Um, It's the 26th right now, and I've only done three sits, and the season opened on the 15th. I went out opening day. Actually, opening day wasn't really a sit. It was kind of a still hunt deal because it was storming and raining. But um, saw a deer, tried to make a stock on it. Uh, wind shifted and it busted me. But the next day, the 16th, which is my birthday, um, been trying for years to shoot a, a birthday deer. And uh, got my opportunity, got an arrow into a doe big mature doe and uh it was kind of a I wouldn't say a rush shot but there was um it was kind of a spot and stock deal there was a I popped up into this field that has a bedding area behind it and uh spotted a deer wind blowing directly in my face so I dropped down the hill circled around and um Ended up being two fawns, two does, and this one lone, I think she was probably, you know, over 120 pounds. And she ended up being the first one that kind of worked her way across the field. And I was in the, just in the wood line and kind of like a little ground blind set up with some um, rose bushes and stuff. And I kind of, I came to full draw. She had me pegged, and um, there was one little rosebush branch covering her um, vitals, and I think I I tried to move. I was on my knees. I tried to move to the side, and uh, thinking back, I think I had the pins right on her shoulder, and she was quartering away, and I shot and got, like, no penetration and... um, when I was watching her run off, there was like, you know, 80% of my arrow still sticking out of her. So I kind of just hit like no man's land up in there and no blood. Um, I do think she turned up on one of my cameras. So I got a cell camera in that area and the, a doe turned up that it, one picture. It kind of looked like she might have been favoring the leg a little bit. And when you zoom in, you can, it looks like there's a hole right there in that shoulder. So I think she's going to, um, I think she's going to do fine. So yesterday, I went to uh, put a camera out, this sign, this hemlock signpost I found last year, late season. And uh, going in, I found this buck bed at the end of a point, and there was a rub right next to it and a, a scrape up above on top of the point. So I'm going in. I'm actually parked on the side of the road right now, if you can hear cars driving by, recording this, uh, trying to do 100 things at once like usual, but, um, I'm going in right now to put a cell camera on that bed. I'm going to bring a climbing stick with me and get it up in the air and angle it down. But, um, yeah, I've always wanted to kind of figure out how they use those and when and, um, what wins and, and stuff like that. Just kind of learn some more and try to be better at hunting these, uh, mountain deer. But then after that, this evening I'm doing my first hunt uh, via boat. Uh, I'm going to take the boat out to some some area that uh, doesn't get any pressure. I mean, it's basically boat-only access, some public land. But uh, I got a camera in there. I checked back in, um, I think it was like late, Ju- late June, I think. And uh, there was like six different bucks on it, some does and 
want to see what that's looking like and I'll run down my uh I got the new camera set up the new arm and um all that stuff so I want to run down that get that dialed in get my system dialed in and uh hopefully have some luck but so hopefully soon after this podcast airs um I'll have them up on Spotify and iTunes. Um, it hasn't been very easy to do um, the way I would have liked to do it, which is uh, getting the RSS feed from my website, which is now up and going. The only thing on there is uh, right now will be podcasts. I hope in the future to do um, like stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that, sell that stuff on there and and I'll do, uh, there'll be more to it, but right now it's, um, it's, it's Northeast Hunt, northeasthuntfilm.com is the, uh, URL. Um, I'll have this podcast, Timmy's first podcast is on there. You can listen to, or there's links to the YouTube channel, which is where they are right now. And, uh, so bear with me on the Spotify and, Apple podcast thing it's it's uh proving to be difficult but I will get it figured out and they will be up there eventually um for sure by the time the next podcast comes out in two weeks but anyway I'll stop rambling and we'll get in this the podcast today uh with my buddy Tucker Westney uh Tucker's a good good deer hunter good tracker um He's killed quite a few uh, bow deer, does, and small bucks and stuff. And it would just kind of talk about, you know, early season strategy and um, a little bit of gear talk and stuff like that. And it's just just basically two guys talking deer hunting. So um, hope you enjoy it and hope you guys, um, all you Vermont hunters, have some good luck this weekend when the season opens and um yeah we'll see you in two weeks all right we are back with another episode of the northeast hunt and film podcast joined today by uh mr tucker westney we're going to talk some uh early season strategies and a little bow hunting what's going on tucker not much jason how are you good got a little late arrival today uh Left my house at six thirty and kind of had. He was to, deer scouting on his way. <laughs> had to take a couple side roads, but saw some birds. About it, no deer. Yeah, we're getting close. You know what I did see last night? A brown deer. Just another white tail. No, oh, he was browned up, not red. Oh, anymore. really? Yep. No kidding. Already. Yeah. So we're recording this. Uh, it's going to come out later, but this is Labor Day weekend, and uh, that was the first one I've seen. He looked like a four. I don't know if he had brows or not, but. Um, yeah, someone's coming. Yep. Don't mind the dogs, people. We got a lot of them up here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's coming. Um, yeah, it is. We're just over a week out. A week from Wednesday is opening day. It is. And I'm not done ordering any of my stuff yet. Just got an Dude. excavator delivered yesterday for the month. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, you, I don't know how much I'll get to hunt this get September, but. Squeak in a weekend. Yeah, evening exactly. or something. Yeah. That'll be good. I'm supposed to take a week off of work to to work the excavator, make it worth it. So I'm going to hopefully maybe sneak out a night or two there in that week and head yep. to New Hampshire. Yep, perfect. I, so, say, I say a night or two. It'll probably be every night of that week. Yeah. And I won't even use the excavator, but whatever. I'll use it like, you know, work six to three or whatever. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just go head out. Hunt in the afternoon, but... Uh, yeah, it's been kind of screwed up for me in both season the last few years. I hurt my shoulder pretty bad like three years ago now, almost four years ago, and so I couldn't bow hunt that year. And then the following year I did. I shot a doe, and then last year we lost Sarah's mother beginning of doe season, or bow season, and that kind of screwed up most of deer season. We were pretty busy dealing with that. And right. So it's been tricky with us. And then, we, like I said, we just got the excavator delivered. We're trying to make some horse pasture up here and a riding ring for her. And So, yeah, just a typical busy young life. And 
tell us about the shoulder injury. That was a little yeah, that was pretty rough. That uh, cross rut over the bar. Actually. Yeah. So for those that don't know, I used to race motocross, and I still would like to, but that's neither here nor there. But I uh, it was May of 2018, I think it was. It was second. Was it that early? Yes. Oh. It was like the well, I bought the bike in April, and I didn't. Yeah, start of the year. Yeah, it was start start of the year, and I didn't race. That was the first race that I wanted to do that year. Anyways, it was second moto, second lap, maybe third lap. I don't know. Anyways, cross rutted up over a triple. I knew I was cross rutting, and I, so I slowed down, and I was just going to double it. And half halfway through the lip, I, I thought I still had enough speed, and I decided I was okay. I was going to triple it. And a, I was cross rutted. B, I didn't have enough speed, and I just totally swapped out on landing and face planted, shattered shoulder, broken humerus. Separated collarbone, the whole nine yards, concussion, two black eyes. That put me out of commission for a while. I was that happened Sunday. Surgery was Tuesday. Screwed back together though, we're good to go. Yep. All set. Yep. Back on the line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's not a small I think it's what, one ten? That's pretty big, yeah. One ten or one twenty or something. Yeah, it's it's not too small. I don't know, it hurt. It didn't It, it was, sucks when you get when you're in the air and you're you gotta wait. Yeah, I knew it was, I knew it was happening as soon as I was off the lift. It was like it's like that dream. I didn't know that, if I should jump off the bike or just ride it out. Yeah. And I, I'm terrible at jumping off bikes when I'm crashing, so I just decided I was going to ride this one out. Yeah, and I did actually. I landed, swapped the first time, and it swapped me the other way, and that's when I jumped off finally. I landed right on my feet, probably 40 miles an hour, and that just sends you right into a face plant. So. Yep. Yeah, because you so, didn't clear, you didn't have a speed, so you didn't get the luxury of landing on the downside. No, I didn't of the land on the downside at all. No. You hit a wall. Yeah, it sucked, but it took me a few months to heal up from that. Longer than that, actually, but a few months I was at least walking around and using my arms again. And yeah, but I did get to deer hunt that year, just not with my bow. So that was good. I actually spent two weeks in Maine that year. So that was a lot of fun. But yep. So what's your um, your early season strategy? You on doe patrol? Or are you seeing what your cameras are telling you? Are you on food, scrapes? What yeah, so I don't really... Early season, if a doe walks by, I'm probably going to shoot it. Yeah. But I'm really not out there just hunting for does. I just... Or food, in that for that matter. I feel like, in my mind, everybody says, that just go hunt the acorns. But how do you do that? They're absolutely everywhere. Yeah, especially this The year. last five or six years, they've been everywhere. So you can find those areas where the acorns are just getting hammered. They they leave certain areas alone till later in the year. I found, but so I just I try to focus on scrapes personally, and I found an area over in New Hampshire that there's like there's an area where there's probably like six community scrapes in this one one bottom, and it's I've had cameras out there for the last few years, and it's always always lit up with bucks, and there's always deer travel through there. At, all hours of the day it seems like so yeah i just i guess i try to find scrapes and if i can find some fresh rubs early in the season when they're shedding their velvet they're that tells me the deer are right there anyways so i try to hone in on those and yeah and they don't seem to move too far from there either i find that as the rut comes they're still there they, their area expands obviously but right we get the luxury of having quite a bit of does around yeah we do so they don't have to exactly know, do they don't the travel 10 mile loop no like the northern main stuff <coughs> yeah that's incredible they go forever yeah yeah they do yeah they'll whoop your butt in a day that's oh, for yeah. sure but uh i see you got a did you just get the saddle or are you i did yeah i haven't even i've i just set it up on the base of the tree last weekend and tried it out but yeah, I got that last Friday. Came in. Yeah, yeah, that'll help with the, you know, being mobile and yeah, being able sure. to get on them hot yep. scrapes and yeah, and that's what I like to like to be able to move around. I hate to be. I hate lugging in a hang on set up any kind of distance and then wanting to move. It's loud and it takes a minute. And yep. You get hot and sweaty and miserable by the time you're ready to sit in your stand and yep. you're cold. It just sucks. So it'll be fun. It was comfortable. I tried it, like I said, right on the edge of the lawn there. And I think it'll be good. We'll see. Hopefully yeah, I get a chance to use it. It's definitely a, 
a little, little bit of a learning curve because everything's 180 degrees now. You're not right. You're facing the tree, so That's your right. bow's got to be on the other side. And yep. but no, I, I mainly bought it because of that spot in New Hampshire I'm talking about. is a it's a long walk in. It's all it's a good walk in. It's all downhill, but the walkout's all uphill. Yeah. So I didn't want to lug a stand all the way back in there, so I'm just gonna do this and bounce around because there's like I said, there's several community scrapes down there and I don't know what one I want to sit at I'll sit one one night and we'll see how it goes I'll sit another one the other if I have to and yeah I like so most of the community scrapes I found over there are right on pretty beaten in runs so kind of working two vantage points I guess and hoping they'll come through on the run and also yeah. come to check the scrapes so yeah but it's pretty cool and when I was younger I always thought just just bucks for using scrapes but now that i run cameras on them and multiple their podcasts out about them knowing more than than i used to but yeah every deer uses them yeah yeah even the year fawn, round too yeah year round even the fawns the moms will teach the fawns to use them and it's pretty cool the intel you can get from just leaving a camera up yep. on them yeah that's what i'm going to focus on this year because yep. what i've been doing hasn't been working so anything i was doing last year i'm doing 180 degrees the opposite yeah staying away from the food for the most part um try to find maybe some transition areas yeah between food and what potentially could be bedding i hate saying bedding around here because it's yeah it's few and far between it's but. so sparse i mean even in smaller patches of woods there's still bigger woods around it and they don't mm -hmm. care about roads so you no. got to like look at it at a zoomed out that's right look it still looks like big woods and they still act you know they're they're not going to bed in the same spot no they're not you know every night and come out to the same field and it's just uh yeah I, I feel like being in a transition area over a scrape is going to be i have had luck where i've gone in found some fresh feeding sign scurried up the tree and i shot a doe that night yeah but you know it's just luck it is they luck. happen to come yeah. back in exactly so and that's what i meant there is when I said that about the acorns, there is spots they definitely feed in that area more than they will the right. others. But I, I don't know. There's acorns all throughout the woods every year. Not every year, but lately there has, it has been. been. Yeah. So it's just like a buck roaming through. He's not. He doesn't have to lay down here every night. He can just go over here and take a nibble and lay down there if he has to chew his cud. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't really matter. But it, it helps when you find a pinch point or a funnel or something like that. Right. They don't have to go through there, but they're ninety nine percent chance they're gonna go More through. More likely, there. yeah. Yeah. And it's generational, like you know, like you yeah, said, the does teach is. the fawns. That's right. You know, that's how we get over there as we go through here. And yep. that's why you see those big beaten down um ditches through those pinch points. Oh yeah. And moose and everything yeah. else use them and Yeah, they do. So you switch to the I see those full metal jackets there. I did, that's yeah. New so this year. that's new this year for me. I those Carbon Express Maxima Reds I've used probably since 2013 or 14, 14 I guess probably when I got my first Matthews and I've shot some deer with them and I've always killed the deer I've shot with them, but I've never ever had good penetration and I'm all, I'm also using expandable broadheads so that takes away some kinetic energy. But I got looking around this year at shooting some heavier arrows and found a brand called grizzly stick arrows and they were they're heavy you can get them 200 grain broadheads yeah single bevel two blade broadheads and they're like 750 grains roughly some of them you can get them heavier or lighter yeah so i went up to, we went up to camp last weekend and we drove over to l o cody and uh was talking to the guys up there and they kind of talked me out of shooting something that heavy just because of the drop of the arrow at a certain distances and whatnot which i right. I, I didn't think about that and i understand it so they had these FMJ four millimeters and they put some inserts in them for me. And so with a hundred grain broadheads, I'm shooting 478 grains right now, which is much better than those carbon express best I could figure. I'm probably shooting like 350. Oh yeah. So we'll try, try it. it. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I have shot a deer with an FMJ before. It wasn't the four millimeter. I don't even remember which one it was, but I got pretty good. That one, I hit the shoulder blade, but I still went through both shoulder blades and didn't get a full pass through, but yeah, I switched to the uh, like I, I went with serious, um, serious archery. The Apollos, 
They're the yeah. 204s, the thinner diameter. Yeah. But they're a 300 spine. And uh, they got four fletch in the rear. And I bought the uh, Magnus uh, Stinger Buzz Cuts, I think they're called, Cut on Contact. Yep. Yeah. 125 grains. And I got a 100 um, insert. So I think I'm at like 526 or something. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. And, uh, but it's, I, I got 20, 30, and 40 yard pins. My bow has up to 60 but i just took those pins out i'm just gonna yeah stay at 40 yards but with the four fletch in the rear you know because i thought like like i'm gonna have to tune my bow for those broadheads and i'm gonna have to buy a pack of broadheads for like practice points right and buy a target you know for for broadheads for broadheads yeah. and all this and i got an old 3d deer target and i took one of them and shot it and with that four fletch it steers it right it shoots just like my field points oh no kidding i was surprised that's cool so it was a big relief i didn't have to go spend another and you can't find them i went online to try to find 125 grain magnus can't nowhere yeah all 100 or 85 grain like 85 grain yeah i don't know who shoots that never like 100 standard i know that and that's why i've always i've always used hundreds so but another thing I didn't think about, and I'm, I'm lucky I went out and did a bear hunt the other night yeah. to try to, It was basically to run through my gear. Yeah. I didn't have cameras out for bear or anything. I went and sat in some apples and just hoped. Yeah. But I worked out a lot of kinks. Like, my quiver was like, I don't know how you want to call it. It was expanded out for the bigger diameter arrows. Same thing with that one. So I put the 204s in there, and they'd slide. Yeah, it's the exact like, same. I got to buy a quiver now. Yeah, I don't want to because they're expensive. Yeah, you got that Matthews one. Yeah, I do. Which is, I looked at those, the the ones for the V3, they're like 190. Yeah, like, they're, nope. it's crazy. Not happening. But I, I do like that quiver, but I want to do something different because I, I shoot that single pin sight in it. The fourth arrow, arrow, which I generally take out if I'm walking, but it rests right on the adjuster. So oh, yeah. I got to do something different with that. I use, When I'm in a tree, I just take my quiver off anyway, so it's not a big deal. Right, yeah, same here. I shoot with it off. Yeah, practice with it off. Yeah, cause... same here. But when I'm walking in, and I know you shouldn't have an arrow when you're walking in, but I generally, if it's light out, I'm walking in with an arrow on. Yeah, you never know. No, you don't. I've shot a deer that way, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Th- that'd be the time of some random encounter with some. Well, that's like, just it. Yeah. I remember this wicked. I don't even know why I decided to go hunting. It was raining side actually it wasn't raining yet but it was literally like 40 50 mile an hour winds out and it, there was a big storm coming it was early october and i uh was walking up through this field to where i had a stand set and you you walk through the field and you get on a road on the other side of it and i was just i wasn't even taking my time i was just bebopping along and i just looked over to my right like 25 yards there's a doe standing there not even looking at me because it's so windy out she had no idea i was there and i I didn't kill her. She literally took a step and vanished, and I'm thinking what happened. I saw her tail finally a little way running off, <clears throat> and I think what happened is she stepped behind there and actually did see me, or maybe she walked me, watched me walk up the road, and I didn't realize. But, but yeah, since then I've carried an arrow when I'm walking in because I didn't have an arrow knock that day. Yep. So if I did, I could have just swung, and she'd been dead. Yep. What was the one that you did kill? Six-pointer. What was that story? So I... I was walking in. I actually wasn't walking to my stand this day. I called in sick from work and uh, was going to do a speed scout with an area, and then I had a hang on on my back, and I was going to set it up and hunt, and they just logged this area. And I was coming up this stone wall into this big cut, and the cut's huge. It's it's really big. They left some standing oak up there, but not a lot of them. And I just got up into the edge of the cut, looked into it. I didn't see anything. I got maybe 30 yards in the cut, and I could see a deer standing out there, like maybe 150 yards away, and it's like, I sat right down. I sat right behind this little spruce tree. I had nothing else to hide behind. And I had my grunt tube with me, and I grunted at him. It was like October 17th, I think. I grunted at him, like, not exaggerating, 15 or 20 times. He never acknowledged me. He Maybe a little bit. He'd pick his head up, and then he'd go back to chewing on his acorns. So I didn't know what to do. I was just going to sit there and watch him till dark if I had to, or whenever he left. But I, I grunted, like, two more times really loud, and he picked his head up and trotted right at me. And he ran right in 17 yards. I smoked him. But but I was going in to hunt, and I I, I would have had time on that one to knock an arrow. But yeah, I was prepared, and he came running down got him. So that was pretty cool from the ground. I, I've shot a couple of them from the ground with my bow. 
but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I I used to get into bow season way more than I do now. It's just because I, I'm too busy. Yeah. And I try to save as much time as I can for those November hunts, but hopefully someday I can turn that around. But yeah, bow season is a lot of fun. Gets you out in the woods and yep. keep tabs of what's going on. Yep, exactly. Get those early season jitters out. Yeah, like opening day. Yeah. Even if it's 90, I got to go out. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm available. If it's just I'm that day, hunting. that week. Yeah. It's got to be opening day. It's the same thing with rifle season. I don't care. Yeah. Going. My birthday is on the 16th, so I've been trying the last... I've been hunting New Hampshire for like five years now. Trying to get one on your trying, birthday. And I had yeah. one opportunity... Um, a smaller doe came by, but the woods were really loud. Yeah. We were in a drought, and uh, it sounded like there was another deer behind her. And I'm, like, half drawn, and then I'm going, oh, what if it's a buck, you know? Yeah. like Yeah. Not that they, he'd be chasing her or anything, but, you know. And, uh, yeah, I guess I was just hearing an echo, or yeah. that other deer just took a turn. Took a turn yeah. or something. I watched her run away and went, well, shit. They should have shot. Should have <laughs> yeah. shot. <laughs> that sucks. But closest I've got is the 18th. Yeah. I won last year. That spike still had uh, velvet on his. That's pretty cool. I, I want to yeah. get one with some velvet on it. I wasn't going to shoot him but because <clears throat> I only had one tag. I was an idiot and didn't buy the special deer tag. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was a doe. I had a doe um, that morning went up into the cut where they bed. And they, they go in and out that way. And I thought it was her coming back. And I was yep. like, oh, it's a little spike. So I kind of, I took my release off my D-loop. And I'm looking at him like, he's still got velvet on. And I yeah, went I'm through back. Yeah. Whack. That's cool. But Yeah, yeah the never. earliest buck I've shot is that, that one on the 17th. I haven't shot one earlier than that. But hopefully someday. Yeah, yeah it'll happen. Keep trying. Yeah. They're out there, so... I've actually, believe it or not, I've never shot a New Hampshire deer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, just Vermont and Maine. I've, so I try to put my time in New Hampshire, but I, it's like hit or miss. It'll go, I'll go a year and actually hunt it, and then the next year I won't. Right. But last year I, I hunted it more so than I had in years past. And I've actually I've had some really good encounters over there. Uh, maybe five years ago or so I had this place I was hunting, and I uh, had some wicked big deer on camera. Another hooky from work day. I hunted Saturday and Sunday and had some good action. I couldn't not go back Monday, so I called in. and It was Monday afternoon, late. It was like it was quitting time. It was 4.50 something in the afternoon. I, you almost couldn't see in the woods. Mm-hmm. But I had rattled like 20 minutes before and heard this wicked crash over the bank, and all of a sudden the deer popped up. And I, it was like 60 or 80 yards. I scoped it. It was just getting so dark, and I could see spikes. Obviously, you can shoot a spike one in New Hampshire, so and I never shot one. And I was like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm going to shoot this deer." So he started, he, but he kept coming, and he got a little closer and a little closer. And what I thought was spikes were just his brow tines, and he was one of those big deer I had on camera. And he was really nice. I, I was so worked up though; I don't really remember what he actually was. I think he was an eight pointer, but I let him get close. He got like within 30 yards and went behind a tree. And I told myself when he stepped out, I was going to shoot him, and he stepped out. And I remember the crosshairs being kind of high on his back, but I squeezed the trigger anyways, and he took off a dead run, and I had like 2% on my phone left, so I texted Sarah, said, just shot one, need help. My my flashlight was dead, so I hung my (laughs) orange hat on the tree where I last saw him and boogied back to the truck, and I went up and told the landowner that I just shot a deer. I'm pretty sure I got him. There's going to be a few of us trying to find him tonight. And So my brother came, my uncle came, Sarah came, I don't remember if my dad came or not. I killed this deer. I had him. Everybody I talked to, I just shot a nice New Hampshire buck. So we went back in there, and we I felt like an idiot. We searched and searched and searched. We never found hair. We never found blood. Nothing. Not Nothing at all. And we searched pretty good. Yeah, I didn't give up for a long time. And then the next spring, I was over there scouting, looking for sheds. And maybe 100 yards from where I shot that night, I found a pile of bones and a pile of hair. No head, so I don't know if it was a buck or not. So I, I can't confirm that I actually killed him. But I feel like I didn't because I, I'm positive we walked through that that night and we never found anything. But, but it makes you think. I've shot deer with muzzle or two and they don't bleed very well sometimes. No. So I don't know. 
I'm anxious to get one with my woodman arms. Yeah, that'd be cool. I want to have one of those. I think they'll bleed with that thing. Yeah, they're supposed to. That uh, crazy feet per second, like yeah, just with a hundred grains of black horn and that two hundred twenty five grain bullet, it's like twenty six hundred feet per second or something. Yeah, that's which is, fast. And he's got loads that he's getting over three thousand. Holy smokes. With smokeless. Yeah. Um, which is insane. Yeah, it is. That's faster than those loader. Yeah, that's like a 30 out 6. Yeah, it is. But, I'm pretty sure not 6 might be under 3,000. Yeah. Huh. But he's uh, he knows what he's doing. The guy's, oh, yeah, a, for the sure. guy's a genius. And he got screwed with this whole COVID thing because he had a booth at SHOT Show yeah. over in uh, Vegas. Yeah. And if the right person got their hands on that gun and wanted to get behind him so he could get some more machines and whatever i mean that a lot of those midwest hunters that hunt you can hold crosshairs on at 200 yards well yeah shooting that fast per second i mean that's with a muzzle loader that's yeah that's that's pretty cool but and it just carries like you know i i run a scope but i i was hunting with timmy last or two years ago and uh we were on a buck track that he didn't really want so he's like, he's like, you take it. <laughs> he just has a peep. Yeah. I'm carrying it. It's like carrying a stick. Yeah. Like That's a cool. hardwood maple stick or something. Yeah. A buddy of mine actually bought one at the Yankee Sportsman's Classic here a couple of years ago. Yeah. That was nice. I got to pull the trigger on one. I, I haven't, but I will. Just like everything else. I'll yeah. Buy it at some point. But Yeah. Get it, uh, get it early though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted one this year, and at this point, I'm not going to waste my you time. Won't, yeah, you won't yeah, have it. Yeah, I won't it. get it, so. Not that it's a waste of time. I'll have it for next year, but. Right. Well, yeah, I'll get one, and I don't know. Hopefully shoot a deer with it. What about, um? so we'll talk about bare ground guns a little bit. What's your strategy there? You So I kind of go right away from any kind of sitting. I, I hate sitting in general. That's why. I, yeah. Sometimes bow seasons, it's a little tricky for me. It's a grind. Yeah, so I just still hunt, usually with my rifle. I still hunt all those same areas I bow hunt, but I just kind of poke along as slow as I can and hope I see when I'll sit a little bit. I'll sit here, and if I find a really hot area, I'll sit for a couple hours. But I've had a lot of luck just still hunting. I still hunt and grunt a lot. I'll just yeah. walk a little bit and grunt. I've had a lot of luck with that over the years. But, yeah, I've... Uh, I've also had a lot of luck just still hunting. And like I said, I'll find a spot and just sit down for a, a minute. And last year, actually, over in New Hampshire, muzzleloader season, I I was doing that exact thing. I was just still hunting, and I found this massive community scrape, one of the ones I have a camera on now. And it was like a car hood, hood dug right in the ground. Yeah. And like 30 yards from it, there was a big blowdown. Really the only spot I could figure that I could sit. So I, I climbed up on the blowdown, and I got up sitting there, and I thought to myself, like, this is a really stupid spot to sit. I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb. So I climbed down from the blowdown, walked up the bank like another 50 yards. I could still see down where the scrape was. And I'm getting ready to set down. And all of a sudden, I hear this crashing come through the woods. And I, so I swing over, and I look, and I can see a body of a deer and then a flash of antlers and then a body and a flash. I'm ready to shoot at this point, but the deer had gone. And all I can remember seeing for antlers was just this massive right antler. I mean, it was huge. So it happened literally in a half a millisecond like it always does and i had a camera in there and i the deer ran off and never saw it again and i'm scratching my head like because i hadn't checked my camera now i'm like where is what deer is that i hadn't had it on camera i had checked it previously but i hadn't checked it since last couple of weeks before that so it was eating at me so i came home at like noon which i i screwed up i shouldn't have but i came up there came back to the house and checked the camera and it was, it was there like three days in a row. It was there the Ooh. opener. It was there the day before the opener, a couple times during daylight. But it was a ten pointer, and it it was giant. And I I'm not positive that was the deer I saw, but could have been the deer I saw was giant, and this one was too. It had to be him, I think. So I I went back there and spent a lot of time. Never did connect with him, but but I found this this spring over there. I found a shed from a different one i had on camera and i found his shed from the year previous i believe he was an eight pointer that year 2019 season that would have been i haven't found anything that tells me he's alive this year but i hope he is we'll see yeah but yeah so that's what i do rifle season if there's no snow i'll just kind of still hunt around 
sit here and there if it looks good. Yeah, it's kind of easier to sit if you, you're like, okay, I'll sit here a couple hours and I'll move on. Yeah. You know, when you're <clears throat> doing those longer sits and... You and know, and I'll just... sit a whole afternoon. Like, if, I, if I'm if i positive that deer are using that area, I'll walk in there and, I'll, and plan on sitting a whole afternoon. But I get cold wicked easy, wicked quick. So I just... That's why I like still hunting. I'm just always moving and yep. staying as warm as possible. Yeah, and just change of scenery. Constant change of scenery. Yeah, exactly. It keeps you... I feel like you're more in the game if, you know, if you're in an area with cell service, you tend to yep. look at your phone more. And Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I, I, I'm bad at that. I definitely find myself. But you can only watch so many squirrels. No, it's exactly it's right. Like, I know. Oh, what the, what's the weather going to be in three days? Uh, what's, you know. Yeah. What's start? Joey doing on Facebook today? It's, yeah. It's bad. But modern society, you know. Yeah. But I like, I always want to know what's over the next hill, so. If I'm sitting there, it just doesn't work out for me. Yeah. I see a bunch of... Yeah, there's a few in there. There's, there's some like, smaller ones, and then there's some more on the wall. They mainly there. rifle, or...? Uh, yeah, that one, they're all rifle, except for that... Uh, which one is it? Uh, the one second in on the left from the right. That's the one I was talking about. I got with the bow and that clear cut. Oh, yeah. That was a six-pointer. The one far left, that was my first ever buck. He came from the Northeast Kingdom, actually. That was the last day. That was my first buck, like I said, and I, I had shot quite a few deer previously. I'd never shot a buck. I was, that was my seven. I think I was senior year, so I was 17. Last week in a rifle season, very last day, last light, I was sitting up in, behind some camps and drinking a Mountain Dew and eating a Ritz cracker, deciding what I was going to do for muzzleloader yep. season because I didn't, I didn't kill a buck. And I put 110% effort in that season. So I was kind of – I wasn't really down in the dumps. I saw some deer, and I'd, I missed another buck. And then I, it was like 4.15. I hear this something slide off the ledge behind me. I turn around, and he's walking away 20 yards away. So I sat my Mountain Dew down and shot him. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But my brother and buddy were there for that. They weren't with me, but they were just a couple hundred yards down over the bank and – Came running up, got to share that moment together. It's pretty cool. But yeah, then there's, I don't know if you can see that. We can go in there and look, but I don't know if you can see that set of horns. That was my first buck from Maine. Yeah. 2016, and then behind the wall there, there's another big one that's 2019 from Maine. And there's another four pointer on the wall from Maine, and then there's another mountain there too. That was my grandmother's actually. That's not mine, but. She shot that one in 91, I think, 10-pointer. Real nice buck. She shot two buck in her lifetime. One was a 10-pointer, one was a big 8-pointer. So, she yep. had luck. Yep. Works, though. Yeah, it does. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this one up. and. Yeah, it's been good talking to you. I appreciate it. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll record one about scouting, and we'll release that one at a later date. Sounds good. All right, bud. Thank you, Jason. Hey, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Make sure and come back and join us every other Monday with a brand new episode. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, make sure and leave a review. And you can find me on YouTube at Northeast Hunt and Film. Once again, thanks for listening. <laughs>